Hi there, my name's Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this video, we're going to be looking at stochastic synthesis. So I guess the first question is, what is stochastic synthesis? Well, in recent videos, we've been looking at randomness of notes, uh, changes in pitch and amplitude that are randomly generated. In this video, we're going to be looking at sound synthesis with uh, randomly generated um, points. Let me explain a little bit what I mean. In this process, uh, a waveform is made up of a number of points, each of which has an amplitude um, and of course a time location. We can randomly vary these particular points and if we do, then we will be randomly varying the timbre of the sound. So this um, process of stochastic synthesis was developed by Ioannis Xenakis and was published in his book Formalized Music. So you can look that up to find the details on the formula. He used the term stochastic, which you can uh, think of as an equivalent to randomness or unpredictability. And so it means that we've got these points which are going to be determined um, by random processes. And that means that our timbre will be um, unpredictable in some respects as well. Generally, as you can imagine, if these points are distributed very um, in an unorganized fashion, we often get quite noisy timbres, but we'll see that um, as we go. So, to get started, the first thing we are going to do is to use an array. Um, our array will hold a series of points, um, and for the moment I will just use 10. Um, and so this is a series of um, arrays, like with most arrays we can draw those points. So there are 10 points here and they can randomly vary. Our waveform it will draw us a line between these points um, and then cycle around um, in a particular time and that will determine our frequency. So of course one of the things we need to be able to do is to um, read from this particular array or table. Um, and that's of course with the tab read function. We need to tell it um, the name. So we're going to be reading from that table. So just to show how this can kind of work, if we put a number in and then look at the number that comes out, the number we put in is the index into the array. Um, in this case, we're going from 0 to 9. Um, uh, yes, that's right, it's sending us... Uh, okay, it doesn't need to be audio. Sorry, my mistake. Alright, so... As we can see, as we move through these numbers, then the values that I've um, assigned here for each of the points um, is read out. So that's the way we can get the values from this table in order to draw our waveform. Um, we need to be able to do that um, sort of automatically in a sense. So in order to count through that array, we'll use um, an incrementer. So that float um, is sent, then one is added. What we need to do though is not to go infinitely ascending, we want to only um, go up to 9 and then back to 0. So we use the modulo function, modulo 10, to keep us within that range and then put that number back. What we'll see if we just take a look at what happens when we bang this, you'll see that the numbers increment up to 9 and then rotate back. So this is effectively a similar process that we've used um, when we've developed sequences. 
we want to do this um, sort of automatically so we're going to use a metronome to do that um, how quickly should this metronome go well this is synthesis so we're running at audio rate so it's going to be pretty quick um, so for a start I'm just going to use a default value of three milliseconds um, between each read which as you can imagine is pretty quick for a metronome which is often used for notes um, and I'll put a number box into that so we can when the time comes we'll be able to vary um, the rate at which we can read all right so that's giving us our numbers and then we can read the points that are in our table so the next question if we make that go you can have a look you'll see it goes really fast so we need to be able to um, have an audio rate line which is going between these points um, so we're eventually going to use um, a v-line object to draw those lines um, but we need to provide appropriate data into that the message that we need to send is going to be from one variable to the next variable basically it will be from one point to the next point um, and we want to draw um, an audio rate line between those two points in order to get those two values in we can use a pack object the um, value which is for variable one will be the um, current point that we've got um, and the time that it will take to get to that point um, will be the equivalent to um, this rate here how quickly we're going and so that that's set up from the start I'll move that to be three which is the same as our metronome so our metronome is going to strike we're going to take three milliseconds to get to the next value in the list all right so far so good um, what we can then do is just make sure we have um, an audio outlet and a volume control in case we need to control that always a good idea to limit your volume to go between 0 and 1 and send that to the DAC all right let's see how we go cool a bit soft I'll turn that up as you can hear as we change the point locations we're getting different timbres from our waveform you can see on the oscilloscope that those waveforms are there if I do something which is sort of a bit like a square wave you can see that's how it turns out on the oscilloscope we could even draw something that's more like a sawtooth wave or we can just randomly um, position those around which is kind of really what we're looking to do as I change the speed of the metronome we're effectively increasing cycle time around that table which is increasing and decreasing our frequency so what about stochasticness so we want to randomly generate um, uh, a value it's going to be between positive one and negative one but to give us a good range I'm going to generate first um, a hundred uh, values up to a hundred I'm going to divide that by 50 to give us ranges up from 0 to 2 and then we need to offset that um, by negative 1 so that the range shifts from to be from a negative 1 to positive 1 um, just so that you can see that this indeed is what's going on I can bang that 
and the values that are coming out. You can see between negative one and positive one. So then we need to be able to send those values um, to the um, array. So we can use a tab write function um, and tell it the name of the array to write to. Um, when we do this now, you'll see that it updates the zeroth um, element in this array. In order for it to change to a different one, um, then we can, for example, randomly choose one of the um, items, one of the points, sorry, my mistake. So now what's happening is that we are randomly changing one of the points at random. You can see it visually changing here. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So we're able to randomly generate um, our waveform points and to control the speed at which we read through that um, array to control our frequency. Um, if we update this um, very fast, the same speed maybe as this metronome, and we're just going super crazy. Or alternatively, we could set up a separate metronome at a more sensible rate, just to update our timbre. Just stop that for a sec. Then trigger that. So here we go, and then update. stochastically or randomly generating um, a waveform. So we're doing stochastic synthesis. Uh, there's some other niceties at the moment. This is randomly moving, jumping around. And so we're getting uh, discontinuities in that waveform. It would probably make more sense for us to do say a random walk so that these move more uh, smoothly from one point to another. But um, I will leave that as an exercise for you. Um, until then, I'll see you in another video.